if for some reason um, I don't make the, the correct decision to get away from alcohol, I will still go to heaven because I've already accepted Christ as my Savior, and I shouldn't be written out of the book of life. Is that correct? Well, I, I believe as long it's where the, the problem, Shelley, if you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, it's where our sin becomes an accepted lifestyle rather than bringing it to the cross. In other words, it's like somebody shacking up. Hey, you know, if the Lord comes back, you're, you're not going to go in the rapture. Well, I don't want to believe that. Well, read 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Those that practice such lifestyles will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. Now, um, we're not talking here about a glass of wine with your spaghetti at dinner, but if a person is drinking to get altered, there's, that is showing there's something wrong. Uh, what is causing that? We don't want to just address not drinking, but we want to address why we're drinking. That's the issue. And so I would, I would always tell everyone everywhere, Jesus said, watch and be ready. You don't know what hour your Lord's going to come. If I've got a buzz on, that might affect that. So I would just tell you this, that you want to bring that to the Lord. You need deliverance from it. Your body, it's poisoning your body. Uh, it, it, it destroys your liver. It destroys your brain cells. You got to get out of that stuff. I mean, they pickle animals in alcohol for laboratory use. The pickling is what I'm concerned about. Well, that's what it does to us. God loves you far too much, dear, to see you pickled. He wants to see you uh, fully restored, only reliant upon him. And so I pray, dear, that you would just take that to heart. Read 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Just read through it. It's not condemning. It's encouraging to know where our source of our strength is. It isn't any, any of those things. But the word practice is not, oh, golly, I slipped and fell, and I'm sorry, God, and I wish I wouldn't do that. Oops. I, no, this is where I'm in my sin. I like my sin. I don't want to repent from my sin, and I still want to think I'm okay. That's what it's talking about. The Bible clearly says, Ephesians chapter 5, be not drunk with wine we're in excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Very clearly, all that through the Bible is, is telling us wine is a mocker, strong drink is raging, and people that are deceived by it are not wise in Proverbs chapter 20. So we want to be free from those things. Daryl, any last thoughts? Um, I would I would think also, Shelley, it might be be good for you if, if there's a, a good women's ministry there with some good leadership that you can uh, sit down with them. And, and maybe there's a good leader that does a lot of counseling because it's always nice to have female to female. And many times, you know, there's issues in our lives, why we're trying to uh, drown out uh, things with alcohol or doing drugs and so forth. Uh, and you need a support, uh, a support individual or even a support team to, to work with you and to help you. And remember, the body of Christ is here. We're not here to, to condemn anybody. No. We're here to, to, to help each other. We carry one another's burdens. And uh, it's, it's a real goal. I know my wife, uh, you know, she does our pro-life center. And she finds many times women are really caught up in a tremendous uh, uh, depression in counseling, and they're trying to drown it out with, I'm not saying this is you, Shelly, by any means, uh, but try to drown it out with uh, alcohol or, or drugs or or just being a, a recluse from the family. And the, the root of the problem has been that they had an abortion at one time, and they don't know how to deal with that. They don't understand the forgiveness of God. They kind of feel like no one could ever forgive them. So that's one area. Another area that she deals with ladies is uh, some going through menopause and their hormones are completely gone crazy and they're trying to figure it out and they go back to things of this world and it might be a physical chemical issue that's going on in their body. And I think um, it's very important. Uh, there's, a, there's a good counseling uh, website and uh, literature from June Hunt, J-U-N-E, June Hunt. She has a tremendous, a lot of, a, tremendous, a, a great amount of resources that uh, deals with all kinds of topics when it comes to uh, our personal counseling from God's word and what we might be dealing with. So that's another uh, arena that you might look up 
on the internet, June Hunt, and her counseling things on alcoholism and so forth in regards to women. And, and so, but these are some of the things, you know, there's a reason for things that we, sometimes we feel like failures and we start trying to drown ourselves in alcohol because we're a failure, you know, and how could God ever love me again? And uh, what's the use of even trying? And that's, that's all the voice of the enemy because uh, the enemy loves to discourage us and depress us and put us out of business. So we just want to encourage you uh, get get together with the church there. Find out if they got some good women counselors, and talk to them and and get a support group going. And uh, you know, as the Bible says, we fight the good fight of faith. You know, sometimes it is a battle to get out of the the clutches of some particular sin, but the Lord will set us free. So we just want to encourage you, Shelley, and uh, everybody's been praying for you right now. Amen. And we all love you. 